It's your boy Nathan back with a video on the $199 balanced armature driver Campfire Audio Comet. A portable earphone forged of steel and just as sturdy, just as strong and just as well made as you would expect from that metal. Campfire Audio are located in Oregon, United States and they make some pretty damn awesome headphones and earphones and have made them for several years. They're rather new on the market in general if we look at the market back from the portable days of Sony, Sanyo, etc. till today, but they are one of the most exciting brands in my opinion because they really work on their marketing as well as their designs. Sound quality of course is a given, but what you get from Campfire is a lot more than just something that sounds good in your ear. We're going to take a closer look at the Campfire Audio Comet here on out in an actual scripted review. Let's check it out. I received comment directly from Campfire Audio whilst Campfire Audio reps were in Tokyo. I paid nothing for it nor have been prompted to return it. It goes for 199 bucks. If you want to know more about Campfire Audio, hit up their website. No earphone as Comet Small shines as Comet much. No earphone as Comet Small is as Comet tough. Comet nails build, nails branding, nails budget and nearly nails fit. It's a $199 USD earphone that, after doing the maths, Atari Jaguar style feels and works like something much, much more expensive. Its spec is as follows 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz, frequency response 97 decibels, sensitivity 48 ohms, impedance, single full range balanced armature driver with custom vents, a beryllium copper MMCX connection system, and stainless steel body. Let's talk about its haptics and build, which I give it an homage. Among Comet's many design coups are its use of left-right independent channels. Snap whichever side you like atop the appropriate mini MMCX plug and you're gold. The cables bear color-coded LR labels in case you really want panning stereo to work properly and if you just spent $1.99 on an earphone I reckon you do. In case you're in the dark or can't be bothered to look, the inline mic and remote unit hangs off the right cable. Comet is universally swappable, blind operable and nearly slides right in. I say nearly because if your fingers are meaty, you may find precious little purchase when levering them into and out of your canals. Comet also looks like a hairdryer, which I'm sure was on purpose. Below the remote, the cable is thick, lit stuff. Pulled hard, it stretches but only barely and is strong enough to support a good dining chair, though perhaps not overnight. Finally, it terminates in a four-pole, phone case-friendly, slimline L-shaped plug. Comet is about as sturdy an earphone as you'll put in your ear. Fire it from a shotgun, grind it under SUV tires and maybe even throw it under tank trucks. It's forged steel, breaking it requires a forge. Fit. Homage and porridge. I dare you to find a slimmer remote. I dare you to find one as well primed by discrete iOS controls for play, pause and volume while staying as slim. I mean check it, the remote is about as thick as an over sturdy Y split and while it bears stress relief neither front nor aft it works well and only barely wades down the cable. Its next cinch hard stops to the right of your heart right below the remote control. This position makes it somewhat difficult to use whilst wearing Comet over the ear. Despite this I think it's good that the cinch isn't above the remote. As I mentioned in the section above, Comet's compactness may make it hard for meaty fingered folk to remove or insert, but Comet will weather the coming war. Let's talk about Kitsch, where I give it an homage. Branding marks mill into each earphone body and are stamped onto the zipper pulls, case and pin. As typical of Campfire, the case is overkill. Pack in a bunch of high-end earphones and sit on them. The fuzz lining, tip-top fastening and semi-hard sides will keep them safe and snug. And it will outlast any other pack-in case on the market. It's perfectly engineered for everything except stuffing into pockets of skinny jeans. Overkill, yes, but the best sort of overkill. From literature to box, stylistic flourishes match Campfire Audio's branding perfectly, and every one is wholesome. Comet and its accessory package fit next to grandma's mason jars as well as they fit next to or on top of your tool bench. The lot is well made, beautifully tooled, and won't leave you guessing about the brand. No kitsch here. Sound. Homage. Despite its 97 decibels 48 ohm spec, in practice Comet is nearly as sensitive as a Grado GR8E, itself only one step removed from the Shure SE846. This means that it will pick up hiss from a large variety of players, DACs and amps. This is particular trouble for louts like me who enjoy mini disc portables, the bulk of which hisses like the Dickens. The good news is that most well-designed DAPs have low enough noise floors to be absolutely silent through Comet. The few that aren't really don't deserve to be called audiophile, let alone targeted toward portable earphones. 
Comment reveals enough hiss from my personal favorite mini disc portable, the Sony MZ-E55, to annoy at low volumes. The real problem is that the MZ-E55's baked-in digital bass enhancement system brilliantly mates with Comet, making me want to pair the two all the time. Ergo, enjoying the MZ-E55 Comet combo means weathering, withering hiss. Despite being relatively sensitive, Comet requires an extra volume step or two above the Grado GR8E and the JVC HA FD01. Honestly, this is a godsend for numerous analog attenuators whose low volume outputs can't wildly to one channel or the other. Let's talk about bass and mids, again, which this earphone gets an homage. Comet doesn't power yawn into the intro sections of Marcus Schulz's main stage, but it gets as close as I've heard from a neutral leaning single armature earphone. In fact, I often wonder that Comet is powered by a single BA driver. Bass Monster single BA driver earphones exist. Most decant mad lows to the detriment of everything else. Comet keeps mid to mid-high pressure in the lowest of lows while sticking bloom. In short, Comet outputs good power that can pack a wallop, especially in bass-driven music like trance. It also responds well, though not excellently, to heavy EQs, digital mega bass, and the like. Paired with the MZ-E55, it handles digital mega bass at a setting of 2 out of 3 without bloom, but at 3 it blooms, though mildly. In contrast, the Audio-Technica CK10 is bloom-free all the way up to 3 out of 3. Comet's low range is speedy, it shows good stereo spread. That spread hits the shoulders with minor Z-axis gradients and medium to high X-axis lift. While the Z-axis detail is limited, X-axis detail and spread define smooth gradients that soften the wall of sound image typical to many single BA earphones. Consequently, low frequency instrument separation is good, but generally centrally anchors in a wide band that ping-pongs from one ear to the other, escaping outward when necessary, but largely staying put. Next to a good dynamic driver earphone like the Sony MDR-EX1000, Comet reveals less low-frequency texture less low frequency texture but better delineates channels. Its lows and lower pre-vocal mids are nice and bitey. Let's talk about bass versus highs, in which the Comet gets both homage and porridge. In my opinion, its weak spot is vocals, male in particular. It's not that they are recessed, it's that their top edges dull somewhat in comparison to their lead-in bottoms. In short, Comet can put Nick Cave, Christopher Martin, and sometimes even the boss behind one too many filters. That quibble aside, Comet nails my personal preferences. They are medium to high energy mids and upper mids, and non-spiky treble. Comet extends far with good sound pressure, and none of it is peaky. Female vocals are clear and free of ring. Cymbals, hi-hats, and other shimmery, shouty instruments attack and decay quick with next to no wet reverb. Nailed it. As far as balance goes, Comet deserves homage. For a single driver BA, Comet sounds full. From bass to mids, it airs slightly warm and reaches well into the upper mids and highs with good but not annoying sparkle. Personally, I'd like more vocal bite. For the latter Ladas, who doesn't faff around with the boss, Nick Cave and other fading stars of ballad and blue color pathos, Comet should be right on. Next to the CK10, upper vocal edges are soft. This is particularly the case with male vocals, against which percussion derives more energy and edge. But in the upper mids and highs, where the CK10 sibilants and ring really annoy, Comet is spot on, clean and clear. The CK10 is also more layered, giving more space to vocals. An amalgamation of Comet and CK10 would probably be perfect. The HAFD01 is hard to nail down, but in sum, it is a flatter, less layered, less ringy version of the CK10. It's also super customizable. It casts a wide soundstage, is more energetic up top than Comet, and its bass, while more textured and stereo wide, is less impactful and controlled. I love its highs and vocals, but wish it had Comet's bass, sound, pressure, and control. The MDR, EX1000, and Comet share something in the upper mids, but the Sony's crazy wide stereo spread thins out in comparison. I'll be honest, the Sony has in short order become a favorite. It has no real weaknesses, but it's also not the tightest sounding of earphones. Soft edged male vocals aside, I have no complaints with Comet. Its solid, impactful bass really moves things, and its controlled upper mids and highs round out one of the most tightly engineered sounds I've heard in a long time. It's also really well made and generally easy to use. And because it's from Campfire, its branding isn't just unique, it's practically collectible. Brands and products that speak for themselves are a treat, and way too few. Way to go, Campfire Audio. The final tally is Homage 7 and Porridge 2. This is a really good earphone.